Hello everybody and welcome to um, Arden University. My name is Kavalod Shrimpton and um, today we're going to be talking to you about our new MA Visual Communication Design Management with CMI integration. Um, this is me to the left when I had brown hair and that's um, Darko, he'll also be presenting today with me. Um, so let's jump in. So the aims of today's session are to cover what is the course, what are the aims of the course, who is this course for, the course aims, they're quite elaborate, but um, they're very clear. What do you study? So we'll go through different modules, so that kind of fits with the second part. Um, assessment, modes of delivery, entry requirements, resources, and um, overall key takeaways of um, this session. So let's start off with what exactly is this course? So what we've done is um, at the beginning of this year, we went through a process of um, assessing and auditing all of the courses across the spectrum. And we found that there was a gap in the market for innovation courses. Those innovation courses um, currently um, in process are very good, but they don't include CMI, which is um, the Chartered Management um, Institute for um, Business. So what we've done is we've kind of incorporated that within the actual body of the course that we deliver. So our aim is to encourage a critical approach to real world problems, humanizing the design of digital services for 21st century with a global reach. So one of the core aspects of our course is actually to look at how um, individuals within their own locale can make use of um, amenities and um, products and services within the locale to cut down overall carbon footprint across the world. And we're going to um, teach people how to do that using a combination of design thinking, visual language, management skills, and um, focusing on the kind of the business design side of um, education and um, product delivery. So creative thinkers enrich the design thinking process and the quality of design management across sectors. And what we've seen from our undergraduate course already is that our students are highly skilled practitioners who learn how to employ design thinking skills across sector. And they learn how to implement and improve different organizational strategies purely by using that suite of design thinking skills. So um, let's just jump ahead. So it's a multidisciplinary course, and what that means is you will look at different aspects of design as a, its own structure. So design covers a broad spectrum of different aspects. Under the design heading, you've got animation, illustration, visual communication of, of every form that covers print, web design, UX, UI design. You've also got graphics, motion graphics, editing, post-production and editing. But then you've also got product management and product creation. And you've also got um, design thinking implemented within businesses and business structures. And then across that, you've got strategic management and design leadership. So design um, comes in different stages. So you have um, junior designers, generalist designers who cover everything. You have senior designers. Above the senior design, you have um, design managers. And then you have design leaders. So the aim of this course is to um, imbue students with the skills and processes that they need to be able to be the thinkers and design leaders of the future. So we have eight overall specific course aims. They're quite... Um, in-depth aims but we believe that they really do focus on the core strategies of what the course is so the first aim is to generate an intellectually stimulating environment for practice-based research across a variety of international management contexts so what does that mean that means that obviously the nature of almost every module that you work on will be um, a tandem of practice-based work and um, business-based strategy combined together. And you will be looking at those two processes across a different range of projects across the world. So uh, currently we're looking at different um, employees to get them interested into um, working on the course. We have different employees from across China and India who are willing to take on students from the end of this master's as um, internships and possibly uh, working with them on different projects, depending upon what the outcomes are from that kind of like their design journey. Um, number two, the requisite professional business skills, practice skills to become design leaders for positive social, environmental, economic and cultural change. In, employing appropriate design language and culture. So um, what we're looking at there is um, our vision 
for designers of the future is to work on the design is not neutral campaign and considering um, products, services and design in general in a way which is more holistic to help us move towards a more positive future. Um, number three, a critical and deep understanding of design thinking and management in a globalised business environment. This ties in very much with number one and it's self-explanatory. Number four, employ professional design management skills, design technologies and strategic thinking to create complex artefacts, experiences, services or products for global audiences to industry standard. So already at um, level five, and level six, our students are producing um, industry standard products and services. But uh, at level seven, what we're looking at is creating a holistic package and a full design journey for each product and service that we um, create topics and projects on. Um, yeah. So moving on to number five, an ability to evaluate and critically reflect on strategic design leadership practice and professional engagement in the creative um, industries. So one of the core aspects of the course is to look at what exists in existing companies and infrastructures and see how you can use design thinking to improve those systems for efficiency and efficacy. Um, number six, the opportunity to engage with multidisciplinary and collaboratively global creative industries and competing markets, evaluating organisational goals and management frameworks. So within the university, um, Arden University is slightly different to other universities in that we are um, all very communicative and we talk across subjects quite frequently. So we get the opportunity to work on psychology projects, healthcare management projects, law projects and business projects. We have a huge business suite um, which covers lots of different um, business sectors and we can work together with them to build projects within um, the design course. One of the, one of the really beautiful things about that is that you get kind of like insights and knowledge base kind of like inputs that you wouldn't get on any other course because of the way we're integrated as a, as a university body. So number six, the opportunity to engage, sorry, Number seven, the opportunity to research a range of contemporary ethical and sustainable contexts and visual communication design issues and management strategies. So as I said earlier in um, three and four, currently the world is in um, various states of different crises. As designers, we um, aim to assist people to develop and improve any of these issues where we can. And we've seen that already from different things that we've worked on for projects for um, knife crime and um, holistic healthcare um, objects and, and, and tools that we've produced that we can um, create really positive change. So we're going to look at more of the broader, wider issues, country specific issues within different um, businesses and companies and how design thinking can be used to develop those different areas. And students will be coming with their own kind of like ideas and, and inputs. So our, our philosophy is to really work with you to develop the kind of future that you would like to, to work in. And number eight, generate key innovators and leaders of innovation who can apply high level understanding, creativity and skills for a globalized world while maintaining local context. So yeah, that kind of just wraps up everything that I've just said. So the MA will produce design managers who use design leadership to find direction and through that design leadership will apply design management to create a strategy to get there. So it seems like a bit of a mouthful, but often people get confused between what design management is, design strategy and design leadership and often confuse um, each of these terms. They also don't realize how many of the graphic design principles are used within design thinking to actually formulate the um, visual language that is used to kind of like link all of these um, processes and um, strategies together. So who is this course for? Um, we've written the course so that it's aimed um, primarily for professionals, but that doesn't mean that we exclude anybody who is out of our sector. If somebody has been working on a portfolio of work that can demonstrate use of the design cycle across different areas, then we're more than willing to review those um, portfolios and projects. Um, it's for people who wish to use design thinking um, within their organisation, people who are a junior level or a mid-senior level within an organisation and really want to become managers or take on design leadership, um, or if you're moving from one discipline into another, um, or if you're moving from a discipline within design into another di design discipline, for example, you might be a UX UI designer and you may feel that you really would like to, to move those skills into product design, but you don't know how to. Um, and for um, students who are um, 
really creative problem solvers and really want to use those um, problem solving techniques in kind of like an educational forum or um, in, within business and industry. Um, yeah. So our design students are exceptional problem solvers who develop highly useful and transferable skills and are a prerequisite of the workforce of tomorrow. So there have been several reports from McKinsey. Um, you can look them up if you want to. And McKinsey basically writes that um, the future needs creatives. There are very specific economies within China and India that have grown exponentially over the last few years who are, uh, will be looking for very high percentages of creatives, creatives both in the sector and also as educational specialists. So there's lots of areas for work in the future. So what do you study? Um, Darko, I don't know if you want to say something about the core modules. I do go into them in depth per module in, in a moment, but um, no? Okay, I don't think Darko's microphone is currently working. That's okay. So I'll just run through the core modules. So we've set them out at 20 credits each. And um, the reason for that is that it's um, a nice progressive strategy to build up um, progress. So we don't have any huge modules that suddenly jump on you. And um, then if you're attributed kind of like larger credits per module, it's easier to fail that module or um, fail overall. Whereas a 20 credit pro um, process kind of like eases you into each topic gives you the ability to really practice and research on that topic and build up a repertoire more succinctly over time. So we have eight modules in total, design thinking and practice, design management practice, collaborative um, design one and two. I've highlighted those in um, a different color because they're kind of joined together, design professional practice, and then the research report and created situated report, which are kind of tied together. So um, it should be noted that all of these modules are pinned modules and they follow sequential order and they can't be taken out of context. They must be followed in that order. So what do the modules consist of? Um, design thinking and practice is basically um, your foundation module for the whole course. And it's looking at um, the previous language that you will have used if you were an undergraduate student. So you will be re, re, reviewing every single facet of every principle that you've done on the undergraduate, but that is only for a short portion. The rest of it is looking at ethics, design thinking, behaviours associated with the profession of design management, um, problem solving, um, design languages um, are used in different problem solving um, issues or, or projects and then the projects that you will undertake will then cover a huge broad range of like social cultural economic and um, technical implications so we have put there sustainability and inclusive design we're not necessarily touching on sustainability in terms of um, just being green we're talking on sustainability in terms of the longevity of a project creating things that have lasting um, capabilities rather than um, dissipating quickly over time and creating inclusive design that really is accessible to um, the broadest um, group of people possible so we're really thinking about universal design rather than um, individual kind of lower forms of design and then we have design management practice um, design management practice will be um, a more traditional based module which will you can then map across other university courses if you wanted to look at what design management is as a, as a single practice on its own. Um, design management practice um, helps you understand a combination of using your design thinking skills with strategies and putting them together to um, create focused um, outcomes for business. So this gives you the opportunity to work on inclusive, participatory and collaborative design methods. So you're kind of building up a repertoire to be able to work on the collaborative modules later on. Um, innovative strategic management processes, which is very important. There are 10 core innovative strategic um, principles that we employ in this module. And um, including developing metrics for design and the impact of corporate um, technologies. So in terms of metrics, we look at metrics across all aspects of um, business design sector so that by the time you finish both these first two modules, you should have a really good grounding in what you, you, you understand and you know and how to apply the principles of design thinking and design management practice together. So um, then we've got Imagine Communication, um, which Darko can tell you a bit more about. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, so the first two module, modules are, you know, the core modules. First one, the first one is, you know, focusing on, on design thinking and the, and the other one is more on project management and the design management skills. Uh, the third one, emerging communication design, um, you know, 
It also addresses professional design practice and management strategies, um, but it combines a process of solution-based design, user experience, experience, ethics, and sustainability. Uh, you know, as Cavell said previously, um, you know, we're trying to sort of, you know, produce, I mean, if it's the right word, designers and de design leaders who uh, not only think about, you know, narrowly in terms of, you know, when we talk about designing, we talk about like user-centered design and, you know, designers designing for their target audience. But we are also trying to, you know, uh, sort of teach designers and design leaders to, to think more broadly. Uh, you know, to, to to think about the impacts of their design in terms of their environmental impact, social impact, and trying to you know create designers who think more environmentally and more sustainably, sustainably and more inclusively. So this is what this uh, this module is about, and it also combines the use of prototyping, uh, which is a stage in design thinking, sort of to help you produce you know a tangible solution and test them. Uh, not only in terms of the target audience, but also in terms of all these impacts on the wider environment and, and society that I just talked about. So that's what emerging communication design is about. Okay, so uh, a collaborative design uh, is, is uh, so uh, explores collaborative design thinking and project management processes, uh, uh, building on the knowledge and skills developed in earlier modules. It aims to empower you to move into leadership role to synthesize advanced design and management skills. So, um, yeah, it, it emphasizes the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration, ethical decision making, and accountability uh, to adopt self awareness, openness, and sensitivity to the diversity in culture. So, this module involves a bit more uh, product management. It sort of, um, you know, uh, it sort of trains you to become leaders uh, in terms of adapting some of the more uh, some of the product management strategy, strategies starting with setting goals uh, to uh, you know uh, evaluating them through time you know and, and finally evalu evaluating the, the entire project so it, it also teaches you to uh, work with other designers and other types of stakeholders because it, this is a necessary process of any uh, it's, it's necessary part of any design process uh, so that, that is what collaborative design one is about. And um, collaborative design two, it's partly more of the same, uh, but the emphasis is on leadership skills. So while in, in collaborative design one, you're sort of trying to, uh, you know, work with others uh, and employ these product management strategies and work with various stakeholders, uh, collaborative design too sort of teaches you to, to uh, lead others uh, to, to develop leadership skills because this is something that as design leaders, as design man managers, this is something that you will need to develop. So collaborative design too is that's what it what it's about. So uh, back to you, Kavel, for the rest of the. Uh, okay. So I'm courses. signed. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> so design professional practice is um, quite a complex um, module. So basically up until now, all of the modules um, have CMI embedded in them, but CMI is tested within design professional practice and created situated practice. So um, that sounds slightly ominous, but it's not. Um, what we've done is we've taken quite a lot of time to take what we wrote as the um, module outcomes for this module and the strategic leadership um, and management level seven CMI qualification, and we kind of put them together, fiddled with them for a long time until we got them to um, tie in together so that we could make a really tight structure so that you kind of cover what we need for the MA and what they need for the CMI at the same time. So it really is um, a really nicely blended module. Um, so what it does is it aims to develop your deeper understanding of strategic leadership skills for design management has a strong focus on practical organizational strategic leadership and management application across sector. So some of these terms sometimes feel quite ominous to people and they um, think, wow, that's a lot of information. I'm going to do a lot of things. And, you know, oh my God, but it's not like that. The way we've kind of broken it down is by using design thinking skills. And we've um, broken it into really accessible, digestible chunks that mean that you can consume the information in a steady, progressive way that helps you to develop the skills to be um, a strategic professional um, management leader in design in a way that kind of is, is, not, um, is not aggressive, 
it helps you to develop the skills um, slowly but surely, um, someone referred to it as stealthily, that sometimes you go through the process, don't even realise that you've got to, to that level, which is a very good way of doing it. So um, the skills that you look at are identifying unmet customer needs, which is very important. It's um, looking at sourcing gaps in the market, why they exist, and why they've not been met or why they've been um, pushed to one side. Um, trying to um, address those and then apply global design thinking and innovative strategies to prototyping and experimentation. So this probably will be looking at different aspects of um, trying to avoid wastage, trying to avoid spending money on resources that maybe are not biodegradable. There's lots of different facets and nuances that you can look at within this different particular thing. Translating these into product specification and where possible improving sustainability overall. So um, that in a nutshell gives you a tiny flavour of what's in that module, but it really is a very comprehensive and in-depth module. And that leads us into um, research practice. So developing design business with entrepreneurial and business capabilities with good design management strategy enhances organisational success. So um, if you are currently just before a senior level position, this course will um, allow you to develop a portfolio that shows that you have the ability, or displays rather, that you have the ability to um, demonstrate these skills and then it will give you that kind of like leg up into the next position above if need be. Um, is the wrong way around. Oh, the, the research report is over there. Okay, so the research report um, comes first. The research report is before the creative situated practice, obviously not in my presentation because I've put them the wrong way around. Um, the research report is basically our equivalent of a dissertation. So what we did is we looked at the dissertation process and whilst we love the dissertation process as a theoretical exploration, um, an argument of a particular discourse, which is great, we looked at it in the context of design and we thought, okay, well, how can we make it more specific and relevant to what we do? So the way we've um, developed the research report is that you will be looking more at um, business cases, design business cases in specific to the actual content of this course. And you'll be looking at how you can um, find a gap in the market, underpin it with a strong business case, find the relevant data. And we've got a partnership with IB, IBIS, um, resource which is a really um, amazing resource basically what they do is they um, take global statistics they turn them into data visualization packages and then they allow you to access those reports and then you can use those reports to substantiate kind of like whatever it is you're working on so um, that's really useful for us and um, in this project, what you're doing is you're setting up kind of like the practical project that you'll be working on, sorry to go backwards, in the Created Situated Practice module. So the Created Situated Practice module um, sounds like a mouthful, and I said back to myself, but actually it's a very useful module because what you're doing is you're looking at wherever you are doing this course, what works for you. So we will have industry specialists who will come in and give us projects that you can work on, but if you don't like the look of those projects, then you don't have to do those. You can find someone within your local area to work on a project and if you can't find someone to work in a local um, area or you have, um, for example, a company that you want to do a project with or if you can't find those two, then we'll help you to try to find something within that area that you're living in. There's actually a project that is not currently being worked on but that you can work on so that you can kind of um, demonstrate all the skills of the masters to that point and also um, hopefully um, demonstrate positive, um, effective, innovative change. So um, there are three pathways that you can take, as I just said. One is the industrial placement, one is the you sourcing your own creative industrial placement, or one is the hypothetical creative project. So we try not to put stress on you. A lot of masters, for example, they'll say you must have an industry placement. Some people don't want to feel comfortable working straight away with an industry at that level. So, you know, we've got a variety of different ways that you can answer the needs of the overall masters that will suit you. So we tailor what we need to to suit you. We're very flexible. So the assessment process is um, there are no exams, even though it's CMI, it's still not in examined. What we do is we've developed um, assignment briefs that work in tandem with the lesson contents. We spend a lot of time considering how they fit together. We, um, we really think about, for example, in-lesson tasks, outside tasks, tasks that will help you build your assessment, how that journey works for you and how we can build from one module to the next module and really incrementally develop a portfolio that actually really does show your skills as um, design managers and design innovators of the future. 
So this, I won't go through each of those. You can see what they are. There are a range of different projects across each task. They do involve writing <laughs> because writing is important, but it's writing in specific um, comprehensive ways that are short and sweet, kind of like tailored to each of the um, tasks that you're doing. So they're structured reports. And so the mode of delivery is all online. Um, everything that we do is online. We deliver the BA online um, successfully. Don't know how many more times I can get the word online in there, but I'll probably say it again. Um, so essentially what we do is we have different modes of delivery. We use Zoom, Teams, Skype, WhatsApp, outside communication tools like Slack, or comms, um, Twitter, etc. all of these different things. And we've kind of like stuffed all these things into one package that means that you get a kind of like, you feel like you get a blended delivery. Um, but you never are actually in a physical space. The only aspect is that you don't, you can't be in a physical space because if you're in America and China and Japan you can't, and England, you can't all be in the same space. So we 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 recreate those studio spaces online for you. Um, so, um, for example, um, sort of team-based simulation exercises and group discussions. So there's lots of different software we can use for those. We use a lot of different outside software to do those things that we need to do that um, I haven't incorporated in here, but you will know about when you're on the course. And, you know, there are the various things to take away that you can have like PDFs, podcasts, um, videography, etc. And those are things that you can use on offline, like pre-recorded sessions. We do those too. So, um, Introducing iLearn, that's what our platform looks like. It will probably be a little bit different when you start because we've just moved to a new system called Articulate Rise, but the overall fascia will be kind of similar. Um, <clears throat> slight cough there. So entry requirements. Um, we have the um, standard application, which is if you've got a BA in graphic design or a relevant subject, and it's that, um, higher than a 2.2, or non-standard applications, which are five years plus experience. So it's a quick breakdown there for you. Um, if your first degree is in graphic design, multimedia, interactive design, visual communication, advertising, marketing, marketing and design, or IT, or an equivalent to one of those terms, then um, and your portfolio is above 2.2 and the content of the portfolio you know, is, is interesting and, and relevant to this course, then it's like a straight, straight access to the course. If you don't have one of those and you come from another discipline, like for example, you might come from law, but you've been working on lots of different projects alongside your law degree or over your law career. And you know, you can show that you have um, use of the design cycle to develop a project from start to finish. And you really show like, you know, that incremental practice and iterative um, design prototyping then we will review your um, portfolio um, at the same standard. Um, Non-standard entry is a little bit more complicated because that means you're coming from an alternative background. You may have had between, um, I think it's up to five years we take experience, not, not, not minimum of five years. Um, and then we ask you to complete um, um, a design portfolio. That design portfolio will consist of five to ten um, pieces of work that display the things that we were looking for in the standard entry. So uh, it's basically the same thing but just a different way of getting there. So if you are converting from a completely different subject area, like something that's completely unrelated and that you can't find any kind of overlap and you can't find any projects that you've done that may overlap with anything that we've done, we would ask you to um, complete one of the undergraduate um, modules, a 20 credit module at um, level six, and then you would um, do that, pass it, and then join the course. So our English level is um, 6.5, like everybody else. Um, a TOEFL IBT is 90 or equivalent, and if you have English letters or certificates um, in, from another institution, make sure that they are translated. One of the problems that we do have when it comes to application is that people tend to um, give us the certificates from their course and if it's not translated then we can't understand what it means and then that delays the process so if you want to delay that process or like rather prohibit that process is a better word to use then the good way to do that is to get all your certificates now make sure that they're all translated and they're all coherent in the right structure and then you can send them to us and then it will be easier for us to um, speed up that process and we also have um, APEL processes. So if you were coming from a design management um, master's from another course, we could potentially, and I say potentially, because it depends what they uh, have run on that course, provisionally map you over a module. But it really is on a case-by-case -case basis. And we can't say, for example, 
yeah that's definitely like mappable because um content is delivered in different ways and the way we've delivered this content or written this content to be delivered is really heavily structured on each other module so if you don't have that grounding in design thinking and design management then it may be that you don't have enough at that foundation level to progress adequately so we would really review what you've actually done within those previous modules before we consider any APO. Um, so transferable skills. Um, design uh, students are um, have super transferable skills. You can map this pretty much any way you want. Um, our transferable skills are strategic perspective of design leadership and management as pillars of foundation and focus. Um, design thinking for innovation process, awareness. So you have a lot of awareness of different things that you didn't know before, problem to growth, innovation, the full use of the design cycle across a, um, a broad spectrum of um, business orientated and um, transformational um, business um, issues and problems, design management applicable across a broad array of disciplines, triangulation of concepts, so looking at um, lots of different aspects and then um, creating like a repertoire that's a, a linking all of the different aspects that you, you, you've learned together. Collaboration in networks, I think designers are um, really good at working across different types of um, personality types. We blend in and um, we're quite collaborative and easygoing, which makes us really useful across a, a lot of different spectrums. And I think one of the things that have been fed back for me from industry is that people who have design thinking always come up with solutions and provide solutions. They never see problems. Um, blah, 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 blah. Handling complexity, systems thinking, human centered innovation, um, use and implementation of a broad array of software. So we do use obviously the Adobe Creative Suite. We also use um, 3D packages and a whole heap of like different like um, data visualization slash infographic packages. Um, yeah, so upon completing this degree, you will be awarded a dual certificate. That's why at the top of the PowerPoint, you saw a plus sign next to the um, MA Visual Communication Management course sign. So you will get your MA in Visual Communication Design Management, which I've realized I've missed that design there. And um, you'll get your certificate, which is a level seven um, universally recognized um, certificate in strategic leadership and management or management and leadership. They're interchangeable. So um, once we use CMI, um, you will have access to um, 140,000 members across the board. You will be able to use their library of like lots of different business um, tools, PDFs, access to case studies. There's just such a lot of information in there. They're really good. Um, so that's a great thing. There are different ways that you can leave the course if you did take the course. So you can, you would get accreditation for 20 credits, but it wouldn't be recognized as a certificate. If you wanted a postgraduate certificate, you'd have to have up to 60 um, credits. And if you wanted a postgraduate diploma, you would be up to 120. And so for the full masters, it's 180. And career prospects. I haven't listed all of the career prospects in the, um, PowerPoint slide, I'm um, just a few of them. So you could move into a senior designer position. You could be a design manager, um, developing human centered approaches and processes and applying design thinking methodologies. So that means that you are a more holistic, um, universal individual who approaches um, problems with solutions in a um, non biased, um, really ethically fair way. Um, you can be a strategic design manager, you can be an innovation designer, UX, UI designer at senior level, design and brand consultant um, at senior level, um, senior level design communication manager or in-house um, design and marketing um, department manager at senior level. So industry input, so we had industry specialists um, review the course when we wrote it and um, they were from various different companies um, in Taiwan, um, the BBC and um, Cluster and Creative Technologies and they said um, that um, applicants coming into the company with this degree would be able to apply for a higher level position or if currently employed progress to better jobs within the company. So that was a really positive um, input. So in terms of resources that are accessible throughout the course, um, we've just moved to Palego Books the last six months, I think, which is just fabulous. We love Palego. It's got 400,000 ebooks, 
um, just such a whole heap of things that are in there that you can access and they are there permanently so you don't have this issue of like when you go into the library and you can't get it or if you have limited library um, resources so what we do is we assess the library licenses and the number of times students take out the books and if a book is being taken out many times and it needs more licenses then we just add more licenses to that particular book so you're never sure on things to read. And we also still maintain EBSCO, Sage Journal, Shibboleth, Open Athens. Um, and we also have um, access to Ibis Wild, like I said, which is a really good um, journal resource. And we also have this other resource, which is 2,500 case studies from a cross sector. So whilst that is not per se in the um, design management um, suite, you will touch on different aspects of healthcare management, for example, education or different policies and, and processes across sector. Um, we also have a small 3D printer and if you want to create a prototype of something that you're creating, we can make that and then send it and ship it to you anywhere in the world. It should be noted that that is on a, a limited um, number per student because um, just get out of hand and um, we have a bunch of guest speakers who come each month and each year which is really good we have our design journal which is produced quarterly which then goes out and gets put into the library and then goes um, out into the world that promotes your work we have um, next week actually um, I don't think it's open to the public but the um, talks will be recorded we have a virtual careers and employability event where we will be having lots of different um, outside speakers it's going to be a great day and um, we have a careers portal. We have both an internal careers portal and you will have also access to the CMI careers portal, which is really good. And, and we also have this supportive um, combination of uh, partnership with Together All in case, you know, you're feeling like you just want to talk to someone impartially and, and take impartial advice. And um, the key takeaways. Okay, so um, the first thing is, is that you have a dual accredited award. Um, you cover a broad range of um, topics um, across all the different types of innovation, um, design, business tra transformation, change management, organisational structure. The MA links the dissertation and the project um, together seamlessly, so you're not just doing research on a subject without really using it. We have beautiful collaborative modules, so you get to work with lots of different types of people in lots of different countries on different projects and go through that process of, you know, like moderating your personality to suit the flow and what's the engagement with different people. Um, the overall emphasis from us is on uh, sustainability and innovation for a brighter future for business. It's all online and um, yeah, it's all about design thinking. And so when does it launch? Um, our first intake is set for October 2021 and the next one is January 2022. And yeah, that's it. Um, I don't know if anybody has any questions. I'm just going to end it there. And uh, I think I'm slightly ahead of schedule. That wouldn't surprise me. So yeah, does anybody have any questions or queries? Or Darko, can you think of anything that maybe I haven't covered in detail? No, I, I just want to say one thing. Um... You know, normally uh, as designers, design thinkers, um, this this uh, you know course is really applicable applicable to everybody. It, it sort of started from designers being um, you know applying design thinking to create design solutions um, and uh, and such as products and you know visual communication uh, solutions, uh, websites and things like that. But then, uh, you know, people within organizations realize that the designers are actually excellent at solving problems and that they can apply the same process to their organizations to sort of improve the organizations. But now, uh, you know, once that, that's been you know, established and now the designers are really value, valued across different types of organizations and businesses, uh, the focus is on, on, on the broader environment. So now, uh, uh, you know, designers are employed not just to create, you know, specific solutions and products or to improve organizations, but now designers are used to improve societies uh, and the overall way, you know, us humans do things. So um, I would just like to say that this course, is, uh, you know, enables you to open a real broad array of uh, possibilities. So n not just to work within design organizations. Uh, or businesses, but also, you know, make the real uh, tangible changes to the world around us. So, you know, that's basically what I would like to add, uh, you know, about that. So, 
any any questions about it or anything else that Cavell has said throughout this uh, throughout, throughout the presentation? Feel free to ask. That's beautifully put, Dakar. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks, thanks for that. Um, I guess what we would say is, if you are interested in the course, the first port of call is to um, go to the website and have a look at the overall structure, so that you can kind of like have a review of what we just talked about. Um, you can also um, email student support who will contact me if you have any questions or queries. I'm ha more than happy to talk to anyone about this course because I think it's um, a really good course. I feel that we're situated in a really good point in time to deliver this course and for it to be effective. Um, I think we've got some really good people writing material for the course as well, so it's being updated and, and developed frequently and on the fly by people within industry who are just um, really informative and really passionate about their subject, you know, they, and they really want people to um, learn these things and then employ them and put them out there in society. So I guess um, please do get in touch with me. Get in touch with student support via well me via student support um if you want they can sometimes give you direct access to me because obviously um as this will be going live outside it is open to everybody you know millions of emails from the entire world but basically it's a filter system and if your questions and queries are pertinent then they will just filter you to me and then i can answer those um, directly i would encourage anybody who's doing design or is at the design level and, and on, across any sector of design to consider doing this course even if it's not with us because design innovation is really important for the future and design innovation is the way forward and using design thinking and um, design strategies especially if you become a design leader can really affect positive change in the world and i think that's really what we need right now as a society so yeah um i, I can't really see if there are any questions to be honest Alexis, can you see if there are any questions, please? No, it looks like um, everything's been covered, but I can't see any questions on here myself. Okay, super. Um, right. so, um, yeah, um, it's a little bit shorter than normal, but that's typical of me. I usually do things faster <laughs> than slow. <laughs> but um, yeah, if anybody um, wants to get in touch, you all get in touch with Darko or anybody else on our team, because we've got a great team um, and we work really well together. So um, please do get in touch and we hope to see you soon. Excellent. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye, oh, everybody. Bye-bye.